At 6.30, we'll call a planning board meeting to order. Mr. Dwyer? Carissa Pankratz. For Wendy's. Good evening. How are, uh, Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Taco Bell. So I am back to talk about, I did a little research um, and updated all of the drawings. Um, let me see if I can remember how to share. There we go. So I confirmed that our signage is not exceeding the 64 square feet of area allowed. And that includes the uh, triangle going around the entire signage area. So for the front elevation, we have an overall signage area of 33 square feet. And then on the customer entrance side, we have an overall square footage of 64 feet and 0.75 square feet. Um, we have removed the Taco Bell logo from the mural. Um, and I confirmed that there is existing lightings, um, lighting on the sides of the building. Um, it is not the same bronze uh, sconce that is on the towers, um, but there, all of the existing lighting is to remain. So we're not changing any of the exterior lighting. Um, I think that is it for those. And then let me pull this up over here, make sure I've covered everything. Um, and then I did provide, I found some existing elevations that were originally submitted back in 2009 when the building was constructed. So this is what uh, was previously approved to my knowledge. Um, you can see that our signage was originally, whoop, she got an overall, uh, the original, this was the right side elevation was, had an overall signage of 66 square feet, which we've reduced that as I mentioned. And then um, the overall signage on this elevation was 58.7 square feet. So as you can see, our signage has been reduced a little bit and with the uh, new logo, brand logo. So um, did I cover everything? Oh, um, I looked at the existing site. There is no pylon, pylon sign. So we will not be proposing a new pylon sign. Um, oops, sorry. What about the artwork on the side of the building? Um, like I mentioned, so this is the artwork on the side of the building. Oops. Okay. Is essentially what it looks like. And as I mentioned, we removed the logo. So there is no bell uh, on the artwork anymore. It sounded like the uh, there were two signs, and one was 33 and one was 64. And I know that our ordinance is 64 max total, but I think you're not more than you're existing. So in that case, um, any of the members can correct me, but it sounds like you're okay. Okay. Yeah, we had one that's uh, 46 and then one that's 33. Yeah. I'm not positive, but I think the reason it was approved that way is because there's no pylon sign. Uh, oh. I, I'm not positive of that, though. Plus, it was, I think it was deemed as a corner lot. It oh, that's right. That's right. Yep. And it is a corner lot. Um, the building is a little bit off of the intersection. So any sign additional signage that we have is obviously appreciated. Um, and I think that covers all of the questions you guys had last time I was on, which was on September 20th. So, yeah, I saw a Taco Bell with this color scheme. I think it was in New York. 
and it's actually quite attractive. I was surprised how nice it looked. Even though it's purple and everything else, it actually, it looked pretty nice because the building is still like the gray color. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, it looked pretty nice. Sorry, I've got someone decorating for Halloween behind me. <laughs> well, it's good to know that all, all their taste isn't in their mouth. Right? Those were all, those were the questions we had for you. I don't have anything else in my notes, so thank you for that. Yep. Yeah. I'll make any other questions, comments. What, what what is the address of this again? Recording. <laughs> Marissa, what is the address? Yeah. My Zoom is not working. Give me a second. It is five or sorry, three fifty-eight Russell Street, Hadley, Massachusetts. Okay, Russell. That's all I need. All right. Richard Wire. Okay, I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval for the uh, redesign as shown on the plans. Second. So the motion the second. Any other hearing none? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Great. Very good. Now, we'll, get a, um, we'll get an email out to the building inspector, and you can go and apply if you would like tomorrow to them for whatever you want to do. Great. Uh, we already have building permit approval, to my understanding. I think this was the last item we were waiting on. So thank you very much for your time this evening. Okay. And I will let you go. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so next up, we have Rick Ramucci. Hello. Hello. I'm sitting here with, with Joy Boyswert, um, and we're just trying to get the ball rolling on our, our ventures up at uh, the old North Halley Village Hall. Okay. What's your street address? Uh, 239 River Drive. And what do you want to do? <laughs> So, so we're asking to make the change, uh, change of use from the building from municipality to residential commercial. Um, by making that change, we'd like to create seven residential units um, in one small business office in the use of the old apparatus bay for Bermucci Construction to operate out of. Uh, the rentals will be a mix of one and two bedroom high end geared towards working professionals. Um, we would like to maximize the overall square footage of the, the current building um, and create the most revenue needed for the construction costs. Okay. Um, we cannot give you, you do, you are not putting in multifamily units in that building is not a permitted use by the zoning, by the zoning bylaws. And you will need a variance from the zoning board of appeals for that. Okay. The mixed use is permitted. One okay. one residence and one business is a permitted use. Gotcha. Okay. However, anything more than one residence is not permitted. You need a variance. You'll need to show hardship. And how many you since you're putting in seven units, are any of these going to be deemed affordable under the Massachusetts uh, regulations? <laughs> Jim, just one question before he answers that one. The 55 and older housing, it would be permitted, I believe, in that area. With a special permit, yes. Can yes. you look it up, Bill? Uh, or do you have it, the bylaw in front of you? Um, Re retrofit is a permitted use in that uh, day. Senior housing is allowed uh, in existing structures, wherever located. Right. So you could, if it's going to be senior housing, then you would not need the variance. You just have to come before us like you are now. With a special yeah. permit. And designated for 55 and, and older yeah, housing. 55. And those are generally high end. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 
And you, what I, you, you would, I would, I would, the question would still apply on affordability. You would still need to put some affordable housing in. One of those. But, but, but they could contribute to the affordable trust, right? What's that? In lieu of that, they could contribute something to the affordable housing trust. That that's oh, that's at our option. Okay. Okay. Um, that's at the option of the planning board. Um, being that that building is the way it is, I would highly and you wouldn't be. I would highly in trying to encourage them to put in one affordable unit in that instead of uh, contributing to the trust. That would Why? be my sense. Why? Because it's a perfect fit for it. Yeah. It's not going to be visible from, visible from the outside, and it would be much more conducive to do that. Who's going who's gonna to be in charge of renting these? These are going to be rentals, correct? Correct. Yep. And who's going to be in charge of renting the property? Uh, we will be. We, we ourselves, Mount Warner LLC, is the partnership we formed. Is that what the office is for in there? Or I don't know if that matters. Uh, that <clears throat> office is, is more for my construction business and okay. part, of, part of Mount Warner LLC. Okay. Um, kind of a place for you know, the renters to kind of check in if need be. So kind of a, a owner-occupied building as well. So you're aware that, that if we do have an affordable unit in there, you have to screen for the affordability qualifications as to income. They could also contract somebody to do that for them. For one? Yeah. It probably makes more sense to contract for one than, it, than if you, you could hire someone if you had 20 to do, but yeah. if you're doing one every other year, you... Uh, better off getting a contractor and that affordability triggers on what number of apartments six or more six or more okay so does it make more sense just to go with six so we're not giving one away or making it affordable you would have no, five, five. Oh, okay all right anything so five is the cap hmm. right. um, if you put five or less then you don't trigger the for the affordability thing okay all right but, uh, you know, th these are all business decisions. But yeah. Yeah. your business decisions, not ours. Right, okay. right. We're just trying to keep it geared for, for lesser bedrooms and, and more apartments to kind of, you know, higher end working professionals. Not yep. you know, we don't want to turn it into a, a frat house in North Hadley. Well, how many how many square feet is that total that for living space? Um just looking at plans real quick and see if it is written down. Um so I did send uh, their plans around to everyone last week when they came in. So if you want yeah, to, to read it. We're looking at about 7,000 square feet. So ab about, uh, you know, eight to 900 square feet per apartment uh, with some common hallways and staircases and uh, laundry area. Um those are decent size apartments. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So what we're really trying to do is is maximize, you know, obviously the use of the hall um, with the building costs today, as we all know, um, we still want to go with possibly more apartments and less apartments and try to go the higher end, you know, than getting more bedrooms and less apartments and have to deal with that problem. It's going to cost us ultimately more in the end, but, you know, being residents of North Hadley and want to keep it, you know, quieter that way, that's what we're choosing to try to do, try to navigate through the, you know, the codes and the, and, and what's allowed and what's not allowed. Now, uh, unfortunately, this, excuse me, God. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. Unfortunately, this, we can't get around the six or more. I think no, it's a horrible no, however, law, but it's the bylaw. However, there we do have the affordable housing trust fund. The affordable the affordable housing trust fund may be able to help contribute to them on that conversion of one unit into affordable housing. That is the okay. intent of the affordable housing trust fund. So we may be able to give them some money to encourage that. Right. Okay. All right. That's the goal. And I think the uh, 55 and older housing would work there because from what I saw from your plans, they're all one 
one bedroom, which lends itself towards older couples. Yeah, there was there was a couple. I think there was four one bedroom and three two bedroom. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 So we, we we've kind of been working on income in the area. What a, what does a one bedroom generate in our area? What does a two bedroom generate in our area? And trying to look at all the costs of doing this project and where we feel we'd have to be to make it a viable project to get the interior done, the exterior you know, cleaned up and straightened out due to the historical, you know, restrictions and, and get it looking beautiful again, which somehow in some way we are going to do in North Hadley. I mean, we're going to work with you guys, whether we get what we want or we give a little bit, but we're going to do this project together. And, and I guarantee you, everybody will be happy when this is said and done. Yeah. Oh, if, if, they're 50, excuse me, if they're 55 and over, then you know, you probably wouldn't have as much turnover as you might have with young working, quote, unquote, professionals. Sure, I mean, sure. Feeling, I don't want you to tell you how to run a business. But. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and and take our suggestion on a 55 and over with a grain of salt because we're not designers. This is your project. So right. it's like you have to make these business decisions. So, um, but yeah. that's, what it's, that's what the zoning is for. So he won't have to go through a, through a variance process yeah, possibility which could be denied. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. But the, the, the one the one thing about you know when I'll, and I I'm just going to quote zone bylaw the zone bylaw to you to get the zoning variance for multifamily housing you need to show hardship, and that's not financial. That's something <laughs> about topography, shape of the property, et cetera, et cetera. And you, you will be hard pressed to show true hardship. So if there's somebody in the area that really has heartburn over converting this to multifamily dwellings, these are decisions you need to make. Whereas if you go for the 55 and over, it's not a zoning variance, it's a special permit. And as long as the planning board is consistent with the, appli with the application of the 55 and over bylaw, uh, and somebody were to appeal it, They'd be hard pressed to show that we were arbitrary and capricious. Um, first of all, because there's still a need for over 55 housing in the area. Um, and, you know, it would be a little bit easier sell to regarding zoning bylaws. But again, these are decisions you gentlemen have to make. But I, hey. I applaud these two gentlemen for. Uh, one thing, because someone from Sunderland came up to me and said, oh, oh there's going to be apartments there and they're going to want 20 apartments and they're going to want some apartments on the ball field. That's what happened in Sunderland. And uh, they went for a variance and they didn't get it. So uh, either you have great foresight or you have... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. By, by no means do we want to turn that green space to ball field into anything but uh, just something to enjoy, uh, but maximize the, the square footage of the interior of the building to maximize our revenue on this whole venture. Yeah. And, and we applaud you for trying to do a good job. Don't, don't take it anything other than that, because we, exactly. we still have to apply the zone bylaw across the board, irregardless of who applies. So sure, don't take sure. it personally when we say certain things because the law, the zone bylaw, the zone bylaw, but we, first of all, you know, we, we know both of you gentlemen and we know that you are truly trying to do a good job. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And, yeah. we, and we understand that, but like I said, we just wanted to, you know, get the ball rolling. <clears throat> Everybody has been asking now for quite some time, what is going on? What are the intentions? And we finally got to the point that we've got some ideas and, some thoughts. And so we have to, you know, start obviously, you know, getting to you folks and other, you know, committees to, to let you know what we're thinking and, you know, and, and being a resident and business owner in Hadley, um, we're going to rely a lot on you committee members instead of just, you know, spending money with other people to tell us what we can and can't do. We're going to rely on you to, to guide us through because that's part of what I feel is why you're in the position you're in the position to do. Yeah, yeah we're, we're not impatient about how long it'll take because <laughs> somehow when the town manages real estate, 
it took about 25 years just to get rid of that property. <laughs> I think uh, you guys are showing great foresight in going ahead with it so quickly. So, Rick, while, while you're here, yep. um, would you like to ask for a uh, waiver of site plan approval to use the uh, site for your business for the time being? Yeah, I guess if this is the opportunity to, to do so, um, and that doesn't lock us into any restrictions later on on that property. No, it, it, uh, I'm assuming there are no exterior alterations planned immediately. No, no, no cosmetic, maybe paint and, uh, you know, okay. get roof coated kind of thing. But no, you know, we're, we've been talking with historical and there's going to be no, no change on that. What is the address again? 239, 239 River Drive. 239 River Drive, okay. Elevator. Is there an elevator in there? I didn't see it on the plans. No, no elevator. How'd you get away with that one? Well, I don't know if we got away with anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good, I like that comment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Like I said, this is this is something that you know we know it's going to be a, a long term you know back and forth back and, and forth yeah. and kind of you know even our you know our revenue we know this isn't a, a cash fall right away and it's going to be a long term and more for our kids but more for the you know community of North Hadley here and to try to preserve this building you know we're not we're not landlords you know in, in many different ventures so this is kind of our our first thing but it's it's important building to us so. Okay, that's good. So you are requesting a waiver of site plan, site plan of further of site plan approval for a what do you call it, temporary occupancy bill? I'd say a, a, for change of use to house Bermucci construction with no exterior alteration or signs at this time. Okay. Kind of like what we did for uh, Tim Keats across the street. Okay. <clears throat> um, Bill, can I just interrupt? Are you there? Yeah. Yep. Um, we may be coating that roof with the same aluminum asphalt base that's originally on that roof just to buy us some time. We have some leaking areas. Um, so that would be the only thing that we would be doing on that building is apple to apple. Yep. Just putting a roof sure. coating just to make sure we're not saying something we're not supposed to say, but yep. we're telling you we're not altering anything. I just want to let you know we may be getting that roof coated here before it gets too cold. Yep, no, that be that's fine. The alterations we're talking about are things like putting in new doors and new windows and uh, you know, yep. basically changing the structure. Yeah, and no. I don't think you're doing that at this no. point. Yeah. You're, 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 this you're, you're basically doing routine maintenance of the building, like it's, the building is white. If you were to come paint the building white, that's just routine maintenance. Okay. Okay. So, so that's the motion. That's the motion. Do we have a second? Second. The motion and a second. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. That takes care of that little thing. Okay. Um, as far as, you know, yeah, okay. We, we, we applaud you for coming in and letting us know what you want to do. And like I says, uh, we have confidence you'll do a good job and work with the town on it. That, that's exactly what we wanted to do was to, you know, like I said, break the ice, come and start talking to you guys. We understand this is going to take quite some time. We're going to be back and forth multiple times, but at least – we need to start letting somebody know where we're at, what we're doing, what we're thinking, and we'll start navigating through your responses on the yays and the nays and the, you know, what we could possibly do. And, and then we're going to be back again, you know, down the road here shortly. So very good. Okay. So okay. thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Good luck. Thank you. No, bye bye. I believe Mr. Squire. So there are two things, uh, Jeff has uh, one request for us, and then uh, Mike Dagnan is just here for the re-vote on uh, the uh, 401 Russell Street. 
Okay. And you yeah. have that in your inbox, right? I just, Bill? yeah, I just, I just got it. So I'm going to share that. So um, the uh, the issue is that um, uh, Mark missed the first session of uh, the review of the 401 Russell Street, and um, so. Um, we didn't uh, declare prior to the last vote that he had. Uh, I had uh, viewed it and then completed the form. Yeah, yeah, brought himself up to speed and by reviewing the video and um, uh, executing the certification prior to participating in a vote. So, uh, in the interest of not throwing anyone a gratuitous appealable issue. I thought it would be best if we just revoted it. I agree. Makes and sense. I think we can do that instantly, and then we'll have a we have a couple of things that Jeff wants to talk to us about. So let okay. me let's get this out of the way, and I, I won't go through the the whole motion again um, because it's on the record from the last time. But I will move to approve the application. Uh, this is uh, Amherst Development. Um, as previously uh, to approve the application of uh, uh, Amherst development for site plan approval based upon the findings and upon the con conditions that I had uh, previously laid out in detail at our last meeting, which was October 4th, which was October 4th. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for catching that, Bill. I good, think good, uh, good, good, good catch, like you said. Yeah. It's, anyway, do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Okay. Motion second. Good catch on, on, on your part, and you're right. We don't want to give somebody... I have done the paperwork, field, but we also well, we made it public. Easy yeah. pass, like you said. Yeah. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right. Good. Mr. Squire. Good evening, everyone. So the, the first one, the easy one, um, is I guess we're going to request a continuance for the 13 Russell Street parcel. Obviously, we're going to we're going to pursue a variance. Um, turns out there's two tenths of a square foot that is outside of setbacks on that property. So to do anything on there is going to require a variance from the ZBA. So we're going to pursue that process um, so we can continue this um, that topic anyway. Um, I suppose until um, you know we can let you know, or do you want to, you want to set a date? I don't know how long that process is going to take. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's set a date. Uh, it's what the yeah. courts call continuing to a date certain. We can't just continue it. Uh, you're still, uh, you're still yeah. sharing your screen, Bill. Oh, okay. That will be bigger then. Want to say December 6th? And then you can always come back on December 6th if the date changes to, and if, let's say it needs to be in January or February, you can always request that date at that time. But by December 6th, you should at least know what's sure. going on with all the time. Okay, Jeff? Yep, that sounds fine. Okay. Okay, I'll make a motion to continue to uh, Tuesday, December 6th. I would second that. We have a motion, a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Very good. Great. And the other Thank one, you. I'm assuming, now it's you got, uh, what you call it? Gardener Supply, right? The Gardener Supply, yes. Yeah. So we did have some correspondence with um, Fire Chief, um, latest being this afternoon. Um, he reviewed plans that we had sent to him with a couple of revisions based on some of the requests um, for fire access across the front of that site. Really, um, if I can share um, and show you. Yeah, go ahead. So, yeah. you know, really concerned about this access across the front of the site um, as they do now. And so um, understanding that we were proposing, you know, fencing all around um, there. The plan now includes, you know, uh, a gate at this entrance. I need to confirm the, the turning radius for him. <laughs> Um, a couple of parking spaces at the end of, you know, these, this aisle here to allow him to, to get a fire truck through there. It may necessitate 
widening these radius a little bit, which is fine. Um, and I did agree that we would, um, we've got a 16 foot gate here now. We can try to increase that to a 20. Um, you know, I explained that the price of a 20 foot gate is pretty hefty. And, you know, we may have to come to, you know, another solution, you know, I'd be, uh, uh, you know, a, a chain with a lock or something, whatever works for the garden center and fire access, but we'll come to that um, once they get some pricing on this. But he was, um, he seemed satisfied that, you know, we were continuing to allow the, that fire access through the site. So um, I think that, yeah, the only other thing that was left out was, was the review letter from Bucky Sparkle, which, which we talked about at the last meeting. So I think that was the only thing that was left, at least in my notes. Um, so yeah, not sure if there are other questions or concerns or. Well, we did, we did get the letter from Bucky Sparkle, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's what I thought. And we saw the light fixtures proposed on this one. They're going to shine yes. down. It's the yes. box. Yep. Good. Yep. And yeah, all I that's in the original package. It was really just clarifying this drive access, the storm water and the emergency access. But the only thing that really is outstanding is the width of the gate and the turning radius at the easternmost exit. Correct. Okay. So I said we would provide him a sketch, you know, that, that showed those and, you know, we'll, as, as they get real numbers to construct it, I mean, the, the radius won't be any problem. It's really going to be about the gate, I think, is going to be the biggest issue. Um, right. Fencing prices have gone through the roof and gates, you know, even more so for whatever reason. <laughs> um, so we will, you know, we'll, we'll work with both to figure that out. Is that going to an excuse to raise the price of everything? Pardon? I said COVID is an excuse to raise the price oh, of everything. It's yeah, I don't disagree. It's 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 crazy what what some things cost and others don't. So yeah. So and I I did send around to everybody earlier just a little while ago the um, email from Mike Spank Dable confirming all of this. Right. Right. So are we going to approve this then? Um, Jeff, it's not going to significantly impact your eastern row of parking to go that extra four feet because it looks like you've got room with the with the new red maple at the south end of that. Mm. So, so where are you speaking about? The easternmost row of the west side parking. Eastern if you know. row the west side parking. The west side, no, go to the other side of the page. Yeah. So when oh, you yeah, so what yeah, what I agreed to is that we would take these accessible spaces and move them, you know, further up the row. Okay. It's not gonna increase the amount of you know area that's allotted for parking. It's just you know okay. so we'll we'll leave this as a as an open fire lane and I explain that there's no curb, all this is really existing, you know, asphalt. We'll just delineate it somehow. Right. Jeff, okay. the 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 only thing about approving it now, and sometimes we get caught, but uh in as much as you're quite reputable, uh, these changes will have to go on a final plan. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, do we have to sign them as a board, or does Jim sign them? The one well, we're waiving site plan approval, but we can yeah. condition it upon receipt of a uh, final plan. Okay, acceptable to the fire chief. Sure. And I did commit to getting that to him by the end of the week just to keep the process moving and, and finalized. So if that works for you, that would be that would be fine. What's the address again, Jeff? Uh, of the property? Yes. Uh, it, it was three, geez, um, three, how much is it? 357, three. <gasps> Two numbers. 357 Magnum. Your, your what's your... Um, I don't have it off the top of my head. I should know. I apologize. Um, well, that's a good sign that you have so many projects. You don't keep them all right. In the well, <laughs> there's a lot of addresses <laughs> is what it is. Yeah. Um, I think it's 357. Yeah. 285. I'm sorry. 285. 285. 285 and 279 is the adjacent 385? 285. But there's two numbers last time, Jeff, you said. And 279 is the adjacent one. 
Ah, that's correct. Okay. Yep. So it's right. 277 and 279, or it's... 279, 285. 285, okay. Yeah. All right. Which does not add up to 357. You want to make a motion, Mr. I'm Warner? Yeah, I'll make a motion to waive uh, waive site plan, further site plan approval um, for the changes as shown on the plan. Um, so changes as shown on plan, shown, subject, uh, as subject to receiving final. Subject as discussed, I should say, changes as discussed, subject to a final plan acceptable to fire chief. What was the last word? Subject to fire chief? Subject to a, a, a final plan acceptable to the fire chief. Okay. So he will... He will determine whether the changes as shown on the final plan reflect yep. what he wants. Okay. That's why right. I just want to get it down so when I relay it to uh, what we said. So I'm going to wait for the site plan approval. Changes as shown on plan, subject to receiving uh, final plan as discussed, acceptable to the fire chief. Yeah. Close enough. Okay. okay. I I would second that. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thanks, Jeff. Good Thank job. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Good Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See. Other business. Are we expecting Ken tonight or no? We are no, not. He, he's sick. Oh, he, okay. He called in sick. All right. Too much Zoom. Yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> get tired. Anyway, okay. Uh, let's see. We we need to pay ourselves. I will make a motion to approve five hundred and seventy-five dollars for the pay period July, August, September, twenty twenty-two for planning board stipend. I would second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Hey. Hey. All right. What was that amount? Five What was the amount? Five seventy-five. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And while we're at it, so I don't forget to do the next one. Entertain them. I will make a motion to approve planning board stipend for October, November, and December, twenty twenty-two, in the same amount, five hundred seventy-five dollars. Second. Thank you. I won't. I won't submit that till December. But it, I, I don't want to be late on it either. So, with motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Those are the only invoices I have. Um, like Mr. Dwyer says, Ken called out, call, emailed us requesting a sick day, um, and move him. <sighs> And Wolf is a scheduled appointment to the first uh, Tuesday in November, which I think was November 1st. And he is uh, actively working to set up a, an appointment with the building department. He is working on the, uh, uh, the development handbook okay. with them. And I did ask him to also... Um, give some thought. It looks like uh, we probably should try to have something ready for springtime meeting on uh, these event venues and uh, yeah, the outdoor entertainment. Uh, Selectmen are, are encouraging us to get something on it, either a general bylaw or a zoning bylaw. They're kind of counting on us to give them a hand. Good, good point, Jim. Uh, that's uh, whether it's going to be a zoning bylaw or a general bylaw, because right now, the ball seems to be in the select board's court, and they've been making the decisions, yay or nay. Uh, but do we want that responsibility, or should it stay there? Well, they've been asking us to provide 
an advisory opinion on that without um, necessarily turning it into a formal filing with us. So I guess that will be one of the questions we'll work out. You know, who's going to issue the um, the venue permits? Well, it's one of the problems that the Board of Health, oops, Board of yeah. Health was approving this stuff. People were just going to them and they were saying, okay. Well, the Board of Health was approving it, but again, like it's happened several times before, the Board of Health was approving what was within its jurisdiction. Right. Uh, and just be, you know, right. I, I put in our decisions that our approval is subject to approval of others if and as required. And I think the Board of Health didn't say that. I think it sort of goes without saying, but if you're, um, if you're, uh, just trying to get get your food truck or get your event venue going, um, you uh, can pick and choose if it doesn't if it doesn't explicitly say that you exactly. should go So people were taking the Board of Health's decision as the stamp of approval, and they were running with it. Yeah. Um, and by the same token, part of the reason we have this development team that meets once a week is that uh, a few years ago people were turning to the building inspector and saying, I don't know why you're giving me a problem. The planning board said it was okay. So, uh, so order. part of this is just to try to get, make, get across to everybody that, uh, th there's no one stop shop here. You, uh, yeah. and maybe the development, uh, handbook will help clarify that. Um, not every board has to get involved in everything. But um, at the very least, and I think that's uh, one of the questions you raised last time, Joe, is, is the building inspector sending everybody to the Conservation Commission? Well, I guess he is in the sense that he wants to know whether the Conservation Commission thinks they have jurisdiction before he issues a building permit, because that, that can get messy if someone gets a permit and starts work and violates conservation uh, rules. So uh, part of this is just trying to get it set up so mm -hmm. that uh, everybody who has a voice gets heard. And I'm sure a lot of applicants would like us to just give them a roadmap for this project to do that, but every project's a little different. It's, they don't all fit into a nice, neat, um, it's kind of case by case. But yeah, I think it is probably wiser to have them check with other boards in case you do have jurisdiction. You're both you're both making good comments, and uh, it's not that simple. Even the word adjacent to a wetlands, Bill, this is coming as you know before the Supreme Court. A guy has a building yep. lot adjacent to a, a wetlands. What does adjacent mean? Does that mean immediately abutting? Does it mean across the road? Does it what? Does it mean? Does it mean underground water adjacent to it? So uh, that's what the Supreme Court has to. Yep. In, in a few years ago, Mark, we had the Corps of Engineers on one of the projects in the industrial park come before us. They thought they had jurisdiction under the Clean Waters Act. I mean, the Clean Waters Act was supposed to be, and the Corps of Engineers was in charge of navigable waterways. Then it went to the streams. Then it went to the little rivulets then probably to your downspout. So uh, <laughs> all of these have to be clarified too. Well, and, and I know that there is a frustration that it seems to take a long time, but on the other hand, you'd like to know whether the Conservation Commission thinks they have a role before you've started digging your foundation. Right. Yeah, and, and you, we're we're a lot quicker than other towns, so they're oh, yeah. they, they're not can't make too many complaints. So with with Ken's absence, I don't think I have anything else. Are you or are you or Jim going to be at the senior center on Thursday for the town forum? I will probably attend via Zoom, but there are no planning board articles. There's, on no, zoning, there's no zoning thing on it. 
Oh, the special permit isn't us. That's isn't that uh, Article Eleven or something? Well, let's see. I happen to have that up. It was either ten or eleven. I can't remember. I think the last one is that um, climate, the non-binding climate. Uh... Uh, I honestly don't know where that came from. It doesn't say planning board in it, anywhere in it. It doesn't say any. It has not been referred to us. It's it's to amend the zoning bylaw, but it has not been referred to us for a public hearing. Hmm. What is what's it say? It says uh, let me let me put it up. I wonder who brought that up. We could, blame uh, we could blame it on Ken. No, it's not. Ken, that's going to be, we, have, we haven't held a, we have not conducted a public hearing on this, so this thing can't possibly pass. So that's, so that it, we have to strike that on the floor? Uh, we will, the moderator will, will do it. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. it's unpassable, yeah. so uh, it doesn't require a motion or anything. Uh, the no, nobody gave that to us. Yeah. The uh, when the attorney general approved the changes to the bylaw uh, to the special permit language, they did raise this as a note mm -hmm. that um, the uh, if we if it if we accept it before the town clerk accepts it, then the uh, uh, timeline for um, the time the clock starts ticking uh, for rendering a decision. But as a practical matter, if um, if they file with the town clerk, it might be three weeks before we see it. If you know, for instance, we're coming up at a period where we we we'll not have a meeting for three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so it really makes more sense to have people re file with us. Um, and then we pass it on to the town clerk usually the next day. Yeah. And then we know it when it when it's on and they know when it's on. Uh, I have no idea where this came from, uh, unless it's something that was recommended by town council to quote unquote fix something. Hmm. Um, I know that the decision of the attorney general came in just after we had shifted town council. So uh, prior council hadn't commented on it. The attorney general did not disallow it, just flagged it. And then I don't know why it is on, um, but it will not go anywhere. And okay. I'm happy to. Um, well, do you, do you, did you guys get a copy of the warrant? Yeah, I, I found it on the... Um where did I did I go to the website uh, of the town? Okay, the town website. I found it on a. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'm, I'll uh, forward. I got an email from uh, Council on Aging, which had a link to it. Yeah. Okay. I'll just uh, forward that. It's, Bill, could you pull up the climate change one, and in, in particular about the uh, uh, what they would like to do? One of them has to do with. <laughs> Uh, the dikes in Hadley, and one of the speakers at the senior center, we should raise the dikes in Hadley. Uh, and if it's non-binding, and then we vote for it, I just can you see if that is yeah, still just, left just in there? A, okay, just a second. I'm just getting the uh, the other thing forwarded. There's a link in here. You can also. Uh, maybe go to uh, t take the council on aging bus out to uh, the outlets if you want. Uh, only ten dollars. Um, and Mark, you have it already, but I'll send this along. Anyway, there's a link in here to the uh, 
the uh, the forum on Thursday and um, okay. okay, so let's go back to yeah, in case anyone listened to this did not see it anywhere else in online or any other reason the special town meeting is next Thursday the 27th at 7 p.m. at Hopkins Academy in person. They didn't mention anything about Zoom and I'm not sure they could handle Zoom at a town meeting. That would it would go all night. Yeah, I think would be, they, we're not set up to yeah. uh, vote right remotely. It would be you know, it's nice that it gets more participation. But. So this goes on and on. Yeah, it does go, but it's near the end, Bill. I'm just wondering. In the uh, bullet points or in the? Yes, near the end. There we go. Okay. Protect our farm soils, okay. Protect the habitat. Continue the forest, the adaption. I, I think there's more on the next page. I'm not sure. In, okay. In, no, no, yeah, yeah, here you go. Oh, no, that's just who it's. So who that one was, that section was pulled out. Okay. About the, the dikes. Uh, because if we approve this and then all of a sudden somebody said, well, you agree to, to fix the dikes and if they're coming apart, we will fix them. But it, what it would mean it would mean putting a dike on Bay Road. All it, it just wouldn't work. So, plus you have to get the Corps of Engineers involved. And as you know, if you dump a, a truckload of soil in the floodplain, that's a violation. How would it be if we put? tons and tons of it around the town. Yeah, it looks like they boiled it down and just said in resilience planning. So. Okay. All right. That's uh thank you. Thank you, Bill. Okay. I will stop sharing then, but uh thank you Mark for noticing that. I had not noticed it. So uh And for all of our fans who are watching out there or watch this afterwards, there's also a forum this Thursday at the senior center to discuss these issues. So maybe get your answer your questions answered or your questions fueled for town meeting. The forum is not designed as a place to debate the article. It's <laughs> just to explain what they are for those who want to educate themselves before they are sitting at town meeting and going through the warrant for the first time. Right. Have we had forums every year? Uh, yeah, we've, we've had them the last five or six years, I think. Yeah. Anything else, Mr. Chairman? Um, I have nothing else. I have nothing else. Anybody else? Motion to adjourn. You're gonna get. You're gonna get hit the rush oh, Joe's. I'm sorry. Motion to so That's right. <laughs> Put over here. So All much. in favor. Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you, and thank you, Alex. <laughs>